Harvey, it's my understanding that this live production is going to... He's so nice. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to hew more closely to the Broadway incarnation. What, if anything, did you adjust as you were putting the teleplay together? Well, we are storytellers. That's what we all are, and we all use different mediums to do that. What this has allowed is we have everything that we want in the theater, plus we have a lot of stuff that you would use in movies. It's, you know, Kenny keeps saying hybrid, hybrid. I, I don't really know how to describe it except that, but we have, we use all kinds of storytelling here. And, um, and I had to look at the script wanting having performed it a, a thousand times myself, knowing what that did to the audience, saying, I want that experience for this audience at home. How do we do that? So I stayed as close as I could to the Broadway experience, mm -hmm. told the story that way, um, but hopefully used everybody uh, or allowed everybody else's storytelling in there because because Derek has a way to tell a story with, with his sets and all that, and Jerry obviously is telling a story with, with, with his choreography, and, and, and we have that incredible score, and Mary is filling in all that color, and I can tell you as a performer, um, what I'm getting the feeling of is, is like I'm in this immersive movie. I'm in this three-dimensional thing that's, that, that hopefully all that energy will translate. You were showing me some of the photos of the process of you becoming Edna, which was so great. <laughs> When's the last time before this that you were in Edna garb? The Hollywood Bowl. I did. I came out here and I did it at the Hollywood Bowl, and I said goodbye to Edna. <laughs> <laughs> and we stood together, Jerry and I, and we, we, we said farewell to my breasts. <laughs> and I hung them up after the Hollywood Bowl and, and moved on. <laughs> but you've dug her up. She's back. <laughs> She's back. Thank God for that. Dave, yeah. can we take one second before we go on and say there are two people who are not here with us today. They're in London preparing Mary Poppins Returns. Mm. Mark Shaman and Scott Whitman, who wrote this score, which is one of the yeah. best Broadway scores oh ever God. written. Yeah, that's true. Every song is amazing. And uh, without them, there is no hairspray. And we want, I think it's, it, we really want to make sure that everybody understands how grateful we are to them and for how generous they've been in helping us put this together, mm. even from London. So, and it's Scott's birthday today. It's yeah. birthday today. So I, wa I wanted to thank Mark and Scott. Great. Jerry, how difficult is it to kind of reconceive choreography for camera? Difficult? Zero percent difficult. <laughs> it's a joy. I mean, it's wonderful to be able to work without a proscenium, to work in the round, really, 360, and, and be able to be outside in space and then uh, use all of that. And, uh, you know, Alex, uh, we've been playing around in Kenny in the room, and as we've created the numbers, just walking around and seeing them from every different angle, it's really a joy. It's a joy. Is there a cast member who's going to surprise us with his or her dancing skills? I think a lot of them are going to surprise you. Um, remember, it's a show about a 16-year-old girl who really isn't a professional dancer. Right. So again, storytelling-wise, I try to keep it real and simple. I mean, Tracy's dance really at the end of the show has to be like the Macarena. It's got to be for everybody. <laughs> so. Derek and Mary, is this the kind of project that you dream about because it's almost like there's no boundaries, no limits on what you can do with the day glow and the outrageous <laughs> costumes and sets? How do you try to rein yourself in, or is that not what you do at all? Uh, well, I think the, the story is the thing that you know, we're trying to tell. So there is that joy and exuberance and color. Uh, but on the other hand, a big part of my job is creating uh, a living, breathing, Baltimore of 1962, and uh, there needs to be enough reality to it that we, uh, we, we, we feel that and that the story lands. Um, you know, the, 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 the period of the show actually is, is relevant to the story, the issues, and uh, creating a, a place, an environment that feels like it's a living, breathing environment, I think is, is, is one of the most exciting things about this. What about you, Mary? Well, it was very interesting because we have really two groups of people in the costumes because it's a story about integration. So I wanted to get a different color palette for the white 
group and then for our African American group. And in the end of the last scene, they sort of blend together a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So it's, I don't know how people are going to really pick it up because it's sort of a little subtle. But they do sort of come together a little bit more in color wise and in silhouette wise. I want to touch on some musical stuff before I throw it to the audience here. Um, the song Lady's Choice is a little bit different in, in this production. It's going to be sung here at the Corny Collins studio, right? No, you, no, 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 no. No, but it's by Corny. Corny, yes. Corny, Corny sings it. So Derek Huff is going to yeah. sing it. How is, how is he doing on that? Harvey very cleverly came up with an idea how to take the movie song and integrate it into our script. So how, how you felt about it? Um, well, well um, <laughs> you know, so it goes into all these choices, you know, because you do have this incredible amount of songs that, that Scott and Mark wrote. So Jerry said to me, we have Derek Huff, which is really where a lot of that <laughs> choice came from. We have this brilliant dancer, Derek Huff. It's the Huff. first time we've ever had a corny who can dance. Right. Yeah. I mean, so, <laughs> so the song that we used on Broadway was the Madison, which is was created in Baltimore by Baltimore kids and that, but it's sort of tame. It's like a line dance, mm. and it doesn't really show off a great dancer. So Jerry said, I'd really love to use Lady's Choice, and then, and then, you know, then what you do is you, you know, you then, make it real, you make it uh, organic, organic and it becomes part of the story. But that storytelling, you know, of the black kids dancing on one side mm. of the gymnasium, not allowed to dance with the white kids, is really the storytelling. And, and that then becomes the job of, uh, of Jerry and, and, and Kenny to tell that part. We should tell people as well, there's gonna be the CD available through Sony Music on December 2nd of all the music from this. But I understand, Craig and Neil, that you have a little bit of an announcement of a special song that's going to happen in this production as well. Yeah, uh, Mark and Scott, uh, we asked them to write a song for the end credits for the movie version uh, about a decade ago uh, called Come So Far. And uh, it, was, it had no part of this show whatsoever. And uh, we listened to the song recently, and we thought, Boy, if you listen to those lyrics, it says so much about where the country is right now, where we are right now. And it, it looks back and looks forward at the same time. So we went to Mark and Scott and we said, please figure out a way to use it. And uh, Harvey said, uh, I can't find a place in the show to use it, but what if we made that the big finale of the show? Because it then sums up everything that you've seen before for the last three hours. And we came up with two of our cast members to sing it. And when you hear it, you will fall on the floor. Um, our two cast members are, it's going to be a first time duet between Ariana, Ariana Grande, and Jennifer Hudson. Wow. Wow. <laughs> and it's going to be a special live performance, obviously, on the night as our cast takes their final bows. And I'll be doing an ice ballet during <laughs> Making my ice ballet. Making Edna on ice. <laughs> which Disney is putting out next right out. <laughs> Mary's getting all the sparkles right out already. <laughs> so you've already announced that Bye Bye Birdie's the next one a year from now. Like, do you fully expect to get notes from Jennifer Lopez the, the morning after <laughs> Hairspray? Like, oh, maybe next time we should do this, this, and this. <laughs> Oh, no, she's, she's been such a fan of these musicals, which is why she reached out to Bob and said she wanted to do Birdie. So, I mean, we're just mm -hmm. uh, in, inheriting her great idea and, and helping her execute it. And it, it's kind of thrilling working with her because she is incredibly hardworking. I think she's going to surprise a lot of people next year. Mm -hmm. We have to wait a whole year for that. 